Hello audience and welcome back to another episode of the book reviewer. I have another book review to share. So this book that I will be reviewing is an author I have never heard of before. I picked this book up. Um, our library has a couple sets of double doors. So inside the double doors is kind of a breezeway. So in this breezeway, um, there is a box, a box where people can um, dump their books that they don't want anymore and people can pick them up for free. This is where I got this book. So this is a novel. It doesn't have a Kindle edition, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. Um, so you can get it from other sellers on Amazon. I know they have some um, not so good copies for really cheap and sometimes they even offer uh, free shipping. Um, I think they just offer free shipping if you pay a little bit more. But even so, if the book is a cent and then you have like four dollar shipping, that's still a great, great deal. Anyway, um, this book is, um, it actually, this author is actually a New York Times bestselling author. Her name is Mariah Stewart. Um, I'll put a link in the description below where you can find it. Um, so, like I said, this is a... Um, New York Times best-selling author. Her name is Mariah Stewart. And here is what the back says. On the fast track at a Philadelphia consulting firm, Abigail McKenna has put her personal life on hold, content to follow her professional success. But, but when she's suddenly laid off, Abby finds herself with a dwindling savings account and no promising job prospects. So when a letter arrives holding the solution to all her financial problems, Abby is relieved but saddened. Her dear Aunt Leela has passed away, naming Abby the sole beneficiary of her majestic Victorian estate in North Carolina. But Abby is in for a few surprises. When she travels to claim her inheritance, instead of finding the elegant mansion of her childhood memories, she discovers her aunt's home in shambles, and her aunt's best friend, Belle, who appears to be staying as a permanent guest. Although everything about Primrose may have changed, Abby still has her memories, especially those lazy summer days and warm summer nights spent with Alex Kane, a past love she can't forget. So this is called Carolina Mist by Mar Mariah Stewart. Um, so, in the beginning, we start with a prologue, and some books do have a prologue and an epilogue. It just depends on the author, how they want to present that information. It usually is a, like, a backstory or something that happened before the, um, story begins. So, a little bit of a backstory. Sometimes it's some bits of the person's life that, um, you know, it just depends. It really depends. So, they are at an auction. And this lady bids on a whole box of old photographs. And at an auction, usually you don't know what you're bidding on unless it's a piece of furniture or something like that. So, um, you're basically bidding on a box that you don't know what's in it. Um, so apparently these photographs were of her and her parents, her mom and dad, pictures of her as a baby, stuff like that. So Abby has been an assistant vice principal of the University of Pennsylvania and she's had that position for about four years 
and she suddenly lays up, gets laid off, which was pretty much a shock. Um, so she gathers up her things, as everybody does when they get laid off. They put it in a box, you know, they leave, etc. So um, she calls a headhunter to help her find another job. Um, that's a pretty good way to find a job because there are people that make livings called headhunters to help people find jobs. Um, so he, she meets with him. He says that he can't help her and that he has a stack of about 50 resumes that he wishes he could help, but he can't because the positions simply aren't there. So she can't find a job that plays, pays enough for her. Um, the jobs that she had looked at were about half of what she was making. And that was my phone. Alrighty, so she can't find a job. Um, she dodges the postman because she thinks that there is a debt or something like that that has gone to collections or something like that. And so he, the postman finally nails her and gets a signature for a package that was delivered to her. Um, so, in this package, there is a letter and with a will. Her great aunt, Leela, passes away, and she is the sole beneficiary of her estate, her house, and everything that's included in it. So, she ends up selling her furniture in, in this apartment that she has that she can no longer afford because she just got laid off from her job and she spent about five or six weeks looking for a new one without any success. So she decides to sell her furniture to buy a car to go up to Primrose. And she buys the car. She makes the drive where her Aunt Leela lived. So she finds, like I said in the description, her, her uh, aunt's best friend, Belle has taken up permanent residence there. And she has to go to the stores to get groceries. And she remembers that she had fallen in love with a boy in her kind of childhood town. Um, she remembers a lot. Um, she finds a safety deposit box at the bank and there's a lot of jewelry there. Jewelry that probably would be worth thousands. And she finds out that they aren't for her, but some go to her cousin Sunny. So, um, Abby gets to talking to this old neighbor. She finds that Belle's son had visited and brought a lady friend over. So, she gets to talk to Alex, who was her main squeeze back then and she feels like she's falling in love all over again so Alex seems to be jealous of this guy Drew that shows up Drew claims to be the grandson of Thomas Cassidy who is the person that built the house that Abby is inheriting of course nobody is who they say they are or are they um, this is a great book. Um, it took me about a day to read completely through it. And I couldn't wait to see how it turned out. Um, it is great. To me, it was sort of a romance and a mystery type book. I know initially I've said that um, I don't care for mis romances because... Um, it's a matter of keeping your mind and thoughts clean. But I didn't mind this one so much because um, the, the descriptions are brief and it was 
more of a mystery romance intertwined. So I got the aesthetics of the mystery and a little bit of the love and the romance and things like that. So um, it was a mixture of both. It was um, a good mixture, I think. Um, so um, I would recommend this to just about anyone. Um, they do have a little bit of profanity, particularly with the B word and some other words that may be offensive to some. Some people don't mind it. Some people cuss like a sailor and they don't mind who they do it around or what's happening. But some are very, very particular about what language they use and things like that. And I actually fall into the latter category. So, um, but everything naturally comes together in the end. Um, in other words, it's a happy ending. I'm not going to give it away. Um, although, um, in the end, it's more of one of those uh, dinner theater type games where it's a dinner and a mystery together. And it's kind of like the who done it, like in um, some of those sitcoms that they have a mystery murder or something to figure out. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, it's pretty interesting how it does turn out. Um, this is my book review for today. Thanks for watching, you guys. Thanks for subscribing. Keep reading. Don't stop believing. And we will see you again tomorrow on Wednesday. Bye, guys.